Greetings everybody in India. What an honor to be able to come and chat with you for these brief few minutes. And I just really want to thank Tanya and Kyle for the invitation. Kyle actually came to Adelaide, South Australia, where I am. As you can tell, it's uh, very dark above Yoda's head, pushing 11 o'clock at night. So I do wish I could have been there with you all at my two in the morning, but uh, a bit too late for me, unfortunately. That said, I do hope that you all send as many critical questions that you have about anything I've been a part of or any work I've done. I love to, to create that dialogue with anybody. My name is Will Dobud. I am a social worker and a researcher and a lecturer. Most of my research has been born out of a massive passion for opening the counseling room door and taking therapy outside. I've participated in wilderness or adventure therapy programs in Norway, Greenland, Australia, the United States. Most of my writing is related to really answering that question of, do we know that adventure therapy or outdoor therapy works? Yes, there's plenty of evidence to support that. Are therapists good at predicting which of their clients on their caseload are going to benefit from the care they receive, not so much. So a good example of this is if somebody else you know rock climbs a really awesome pitch, does that mean you're able to rock climb the pitch? Probably not. So we look at program evaluation, we say adventure therapy works, but does it work for me the same way it works for someone like Tanya or all the other amazing people in our field like all of you in that room? So one thing I'd love questions about is how do you know that what you're doing is working? More importantly, what do you do when it's not working? And how are you able to pick which clients are not benefiting from the services we're providing? And by the way, none of that has anything to do with the fact that, that you're an ineffective therapist. On average, every therapist has, Tanya, you just messaged me while I was recording this. Everybody has 10 to 20% of clients on their caseload who simply don't benefit from their care. Now, I know what we're thinking, not me. Of course not. I also thought the same for a long time. But if you know that statistic, how does that change the view of what you can do? Because here's what I didn't say. There's nothing you could do to, to fix this difficult or case or a rupture in the relationship between you and the client. Knowing that one out of every 10 is likely not to experience a positive relationship with you, what do we do then? That said, where I can be quite, uh, I guess, controversial is probably not the right word. I personally don't think there's any evidence to suggest that therapy outdoors is any better than therapy indoors. I'd be very interested if anyone finds any piece of research to support this also. The reason I have that view is my doctoral research was all about how do we know when outdoor therapy is working, whether we call it nature-based adventure therapy, wilderness therapy, what, whatever we call it, let's not get into that. I pose the question, how do we know that what we're doing is working and what do we do when it's not? Okay, thank you so much. But once again, please, I, I hope we can have an awesome dialogue together and you are all amazing. So talk to you all soon.